What's up everybody, I'm Brian from i1 Tesla and I've got another wrap video for you, but this is gonna be a little different wrap video than before. Uh, this is a pearl white going over top of pearl white. And well, here's the color. Here's the color, you can't really tell right now because it really shines in the sun, no pun intended. Look at all the rainbow effect on that pearl white. It looks so cool in the sun. Let's see if I can get a good shot. Look at the side of that thing. This looks, it looks like a normal satin white Model Y until the sun hits it and it just glows. It's so cool. I love this color. Again, we had this color in gloss on our Plaid Model S at first. I didn't like it because the gloss, you couldn't tell the difference, but this and the satin, perfect, perfect combination. And then of course, had to pull my car next to it just to get a good uh, view of stock versus anti-stock warranty versus voided. Actually, I'm almost out of factory warranty. I'm almost at uh, 50,000 miles on this thing. But this thing looks so good. But all blacked out on the top, black mirrors, spoiler. Oh, wow, look at that right there. That's just, that's what makes this car. That's what makes this color. This thing looks amazing. A lot of people like it. Man, that's so cool. But this is Satin Ghost Pearl from, uh, from 3M. It's a 2080 film, and this is not wrapped yet. <laughs> the, the hood is, and the other side is wrapped. This is wrapped, so you, you really can't tell much difference here. Uh, it is a little bit smoother than the factory paint and the satin finish that gives you that perfect look. And I'm gonna be talking while I do one of the panels or two of the panels today, and uh, you can join me. And in the comments, leave a bunch of questions and I can answer those if I actually get to the comments. Don't always, but sometimes I do. So this is the second car I've done for this person. They own allcityauto.net. He actually sent me a hat, a merch hat. The other car I did was the first deep matte black I did for him and it turned out great and he actually started a trend. I've done a lot of deep matte blacks on a lot of cars. Uh, this is another trend I think people should do or consider because this color is kind of what you would get with a satin PPF. And a lot of people want satin PPF, but satin PPF is very expensive. So let me walk you around this car. Let me grab a flashlight so you can see the difference. So this is the factory paint. Uh, it's pearl white, it looks fine, but there's some defects with pearl white with Tesla. And it really shines, it really comes into play when you look at the rear bumper. The rear bumper is different color than the rest of the car, than, than there. And that's really bad. Tesla does a lot of yellowing on the bumpers for some reason. Even the sensors are quite a bit off. And I don't think Tesla can get around that. They've tried many different things, but when you have a film that can change colors a little bit, you see the rainbow effect on the paint or on the vinyl. That is gonna be pronounced in the sun all the time. And that's really cool uh, how this does this. And it, it's almost white, but everything is going to match. This is going to be a showstopper when it's sunny, but when it's cloudy, it's just gonna look like an off-white, a little different white than everyone else's. And that's what's really cool about this because you don't wanna look like everyone else's car. And that's what I always keep preaching is make your car look different from everybody else's. So when you walk outside to your car, you don't know which white one's yours. This one is going to be def definitely different. And well, you could easily see the difference in the factory paint and the vinyl. So this is quite a bit cheaper, about half the price of PPF. My prices are a little bit less because I don't have the overhead of a giant shop. I do this out of my garage and uh, you've seen some of my videos. So I'm gonna be wrapping this door first. This is one of the easier doors. And then we probably will do this fender because doing this door, I have to have this door open so I can get right in this groove here. And you know, I'd rather get in a groove and show you a fender. <laughs> so I've done quite a bit already. And uh, these doors don't take very long. I've already prepped uh, this whole side. I'm going to wipe it down one more time, but I'll walk you, th I'll talk you through. Walk and talk? No, I'll talk you through everything and let's get to wrapping. I've got the panel here. I've actually cut up all the panels and rolled them up. They're in the corner over there. And that's how I do everything. So you always want to be prepared. I got one magnet over here. I can't use a magnet over here because this is aluminum but the fender is not. So I'm going to take my rag, a lint-free rag, and hopefully you can see me over, yeah, you can. And I'm gonna put some alcohol. I use, I like to use 91, 
but you can use 70 if you want to. Uh, I'm just really getting the dust off. I've already cleaned this quite well. And being the first panel, you don't need to tape up any uh, anything else. So if I had it, this fender done first, I would put masking tape, a green masking tape over there. So it didn't pull the vinyl up off of that. But this way you don't have to. And I've prepped everything by loosening this fender. There's just one bolt back there. I have taken the trim off, the mirror off, so this is going to be a lot easier, really. Uh, and then I take the tape off. I put the tape over here because that's what's going to hold it on that side. And all these, all this material has a backing, so it, you kind of know which way is up. And this is this is a directional film because it has a color change to it. So I'm doing it with. I started doing this, and you have to keep it the same way with the 3M logo up. So I like to size it up here. Uh, a little too far over, I need more down here. So really, I'm just lining everything up to make sure I have enough overhang. Actually, that needs to go down. And, and that's pretty good actually. And that's pretty good, there's plenty of overhang, there's plenty of extra material here. And there we go, we're all done. <laughs> Not really. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave this tape there and I'm going to lower this so I can pull the backing material off. Grab the 3M, tuck the material underneath, stick it here, and then bring the magnet back up there. And then when I come down here, I'm gonna reach up underneath, holding this corner, and just pull the backing off. I'm gonna tack it so it stays there, and then the rest of it, I can just swing right out. And what that does, that allows uh, the backing to come off and the, the, the glue to stick to the car right away without getting a bunch of dust in there. But we're not done. We're gonna move some, we're gonna move some material around. Starting over here, we're going to glass this out. So it's kind of the scary part for people, I guess, but you kind of pull it off. I'm pulling towards me and up and down. Stretching the material in the corners a little bit, and I'm tacking it to the other door. And then we're gonna do it on this side. All right. So you, you notice before I pulled on this side, this side was tacked down and that makes it possible to pull hard. So really, uh, really this is glassed out and I'm gonna start from the top and go down but there's no tension anywhere. So we're gonna take my squeegee. This is a soft squeegee with a banana, a banana buffer. Just means it's a soft cloth uh, squeegee and wanna make sure there's no, I like to make sure there is no uh, wrinkles or possible possibility for wrinkles and I just pulled that out. So now I'm gonna start on this body line. You always start on a body line and the door handle there and we're just gonna squeegee across. With it angled up so the air comes out. We're going body line to body line. And then I'm gonna grab the top here and and we're just working all the air out. And you get a feel for this as you do more and more of them. This is probably my 30th Model Y I've done. I've been wrapping a lot of cars lately, a lot of, well, just Teslas. Uh, I just got done with a blue Plaid Model S that drove out here from uh, Texas. So I love my lift here. It puts this up higher, I'm tall, so uh, I'm able to sit in a chair and do this straight on, which is really nice. Makes the job go a lot better for me, personally. Some people don't like it. Some people just work on the floor but I like to work as efficiently as possible 
and have the car set up so I can just come out here when I want to and get the car done. You see me put on a glove. This is just going to help with the this gliding and my well really my knuckles on the back of the car but I may need it from time to time to help push down some of the material. So we're getting down to this body line. I'm going to work to it and it's, it's this door is probably the easiest door out of the whole car. I like to start with this door first when I'm starting a new project uh, just to give, give myself some confidence and to play with the material because I know it's um, every material is a little different and sometimes the glue is a little different for that material. Uh, I used the, the on that blue plaid that on that blue plaid model S that glue was actually really tacky I was surprised or no it was a gray one I didn't show you uh, <laughs> a gray model Y that I didn't show you uh, that was the, the material is actually very tacky and I was surprised on that so just like that all the material is down it didn't take very long so now I'm going to take my finger and run up the seams all the way down again there's no really big compound curves or anything on this one so it's really easy so now now I got to take this material up and I like to fold it in a little bit so when we do put that trim back on it uh, everything is sealed you don't see any of the factory color and you just have to put, you don't want to just force it down in there because then it'll bubble. You probably can't see too well from there, but you get the idea of what I'm doing here. All right, so we didn't heat anything. We didn't stretch anything really, but now we're going to. So I'm going to take the heat gun and go over all the edges. All these edges here, I'm going to relax them. And what that's going to do a couple things. I'm going to take out the memory of the film because the, the film wants to be flat and we're just triggering that relaxing the film there and you'll see it wrinkle a little bit and then just flatten out I'm also going to hit for the door or the door handle and then I'll run my finger in between there just tracing out the door handle And we're going to cut that out. We're going to leave that black. Most people leave it black because the mirrors are black. All the trim's black. This is black. So it looks really good being black. When you heat it, it gets really soft. You see my finger pushes that right in. Oh, maybe you didn't see it. You're kind of far away from me. I'm going to tuck that in there. Once we get it, once we get it warm, we could take our squeegee and kind of push in. And this isn't, this video isn't meant to teach you to become a rapper. This is going to just give you some explanation on to what goes into wrapping a car. And now we're ready to trim. So I've got a blade here and I'm going to click off the front piece that goes in there. And now we have a very sharp blade. Now I'm old, so I need my cheater glasses on. And since we softened up everything, we, or we uh, relaxed everything, I can cut right to this area. I mean, the mirror's gonna be here anyway. And then I do a light score on the top. So I'm not cutting through the material. I'm just scoring the top of it. I'm not cut cutting any paint. And it takes some practice with this. And then, and now I'm going to transition to trim down this door. Maybe you guys want to see a little bit better. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to trim down this door off of the side of the other one. 
So I'll have a nice straight edge and that'll give me a quarter inch of material to wrap around to the other side. Nice smooth one stroke all the way down and curve it close to the bottom. The bottom is a little different. I trim flush to the bottom of the door. No one's ever going to see this. There's no tension. Nothing's going to be rubbing up against there to pull the vinyl back up. And then I always curve up a little bit to transition to the next panel. And I'm going to do that right here, actually. Again, cutting on the fender side. And I'm really, the only thing touching the metal or the paint is the side of the blade. The sharp point is not because it comes to a point and there's no risk of cutting the car at all. Now, let me move you over here so you can see this. Here, I'm just gonna give myself a little bit extra up at the top. And then I'm gonna kind of pull my finger here. Well, not pull my finger and kind of round that over right there. I don't know if you can see that. And then remove all the excess vinyl. Well, there you go, the door is trimmed out. The door handle is not yet, but I'm going to take the heat gun and do the same thing I did before, but that'll help just round over the edges. So I've heated those up and what that's done is shrunk, shrunk, shrinking, shr shrunk. <laughs> what those shrank of those a little bit. There's not that much tension there. So it just kind of shrunk at maybe 1%, uh, but I'm gonna let those cool and then we're gonna to move to this door handle. Door handles can be a little tricky, but what you wanna do is, say I'm cutting the bottom, I wanna take the knife and, and it's gonna be tricky so you can see and I can see, but I'm going to, at the very bottom, push in the blade just a little bit, but I'm angling it up, which is actually giving a little bit more material Going slow with a glove on allows me to ride up on the car without being jagged or bouncing and just moving as slow as possible and stopping. Change positions and this takes some patience and time. Again, wrapping a car takes four to five days and part of it is all these little detailed things and being careful. Also taking apart a car and all that kind of stuff. Yes, I'm in your way, but I need to be. So there you go. That is trimmed out. And now we take the heat gun Softens the material, shrinks it just a little bit, and then I'm going to run my finger, kind of force it around. That way it doesn't catch on the door handle because we're gonna open the door now and open it all the way. Heat both sides. And then feed the mouth. Those are, that's what they call those, oh, those spots over here their mouths and we just want to feed the material in We're just wrapping around really is what it is as far as you can reach because the door handle is in the way then we take a little tool tucking tool and we use that in the gaps And a little bit more post heating with that, but that door handle is done. And we peel this off. 
And there you go. That door handle's done. Now, before I do this, I want to wrap this edge. This is like all one take. 17 minutes, and I'm not even done with the door yet. So we're just rounding everything over, and with our finger, because our finger will push in just a little bit, it'll catch that, just round it over just a little bit. But we want to use some heat. And your squeegee and a tucking tool. All, not all at once, but you want to heat up, you want to start in corners. Start where there could be an issue. You don't want to start with a flat piece. You want to tuck this in and rotate the material up and down away from that spot. Now we're not done with this once we do that because we're going to have to open the door and then, then pull it from the other side. It's a little tricky to get to, but can be done, obviously. And I like this soft squeegee for this because this soft squeegee is a lot like this and you can really force on there and it doesn't damage the vinyl at all. So the same thing down here with this one, we want to move the material away and that's pulling the excess away from the corners, but just making it wrap around really nice. And same thing all the way down. And I take the squeegee and just kind of roll it back. So we didn't really use this because we didn't need it, but I'm gonna open the door and you see it kind of disappears. But from this side, I can bring my finger in the door jam. It's one of the reasons why you want to clean really good and watch your fingers, make sure you don't pinch them, but you just wrap around and wrap this in all the way down. So this edge is really nice. We'll heat that, post heat, post heat it, and that one will be good. So this side, we won't need this. We're just gonna need our finger and some heat. So we soften it. And remember I said, start with this. We're going to roll over the edge. We're gonna roll over the edge pulling away from this corner. And that is actually moving the material just enough so you don't get a wrinkle there. And once it's wrapped over enough, you can you know, wrap it all the way around. Same thing up here. We know this covers, so we're gonna continue this up and around. Just keep moving that material up so it's out of the way. And just work our way down. You see how it bunches up? Can you see that? No, you can't. You see how this material kind of bunches up a little bit. But all we're doing is we're going to force it down, force it up, force it away. And now there's nothing there. Nope. And if you do get a little wrinkle, you can slowly pull it back. It was going a little too fast. And that's what's good about these new materials, these new vinyls. You can really work with them and make a really good product. Run my finger along the bottom. Oh, I see an air bubble. We want to get the air bubbles out. Get a little bit of air bubble. So what you want to do is just put your hand over them, get them to a point, and then kind of push on them. And this material has air release channels in the glue, which will just allow all the air to get out. And we're all set. This door's done. Besides post heating, this door is all finished. And post heating, what that's gonna do is, again, uh, allow that film to forget the memory of being flat. And uh, now it'll be to this panel. You wanna heat this up to about 175 to 180 degrees. Uh, you do use an IR heater with that or a, an IR gun. But first, before I go and move to the next panel, because I do, I post heat everything all at once. Uh, I do go to these edges and make sure everything stays. Because with a little bit of heat, you're going to know if it's going to move or not. Plus, you also want to activate that glue to make that stick stronger for longer. 
especially the spots that we just rolled over. This is a heavy trafficked area. So you wanna make sure that's on there good. No need to wrap really far back in there. Just a quarter of an inch is perfect. Same thing with the door handle. And heat will actually show you where any air, air is trapped in the back. So if we go down the middle, it's hard to see sometimes, but as we go down, you'll see little air pockets and you'll be able to push those out. And they may come back later on uh, in your process, but at least you'll be able to get to them right away. And there you go. This door's finished and we're 23 minutes on the clock explaining how to do everything. One door done probably would have taken me 15 if I didn't talk and have to set the camera up and everything. So let's move on to this one. All right, so let's set up the fender. I've already put masking tape on this door because we just wrapped this one and this glue is not totally set. So I don't want this vinyl to pull this vinyl up. It just lowers the surface tension of the glue touching this and it's able to be moved a little bit easier. I also put some on the headlight because what I do is when I, I slice the vinyl and I can bring it down and over, um, not have to worry or do anything with this tail light. So let me try to focus on the fender so it stays focused. Uh, <clears throat> I did this hood yesterday, so that's probably pretty good and I'm really not putting much tension on that. So um, I could probably put some vinyl here, but I'm wrapping this black anyway, so I don't need to do anything. But I do have two magnets here because this is metal and we're going to be able to use the magnets on this. So as I clean this, one thing, since this is owned by a dealer, if you're looking for a performance model Y, brand new one, uh, you know, there's like no miles, but he's got every option for this car. You can purchase this if you're looking for something that is already, if you want a car wrapped by me, you don't have your car, maybe your car got pushed till next year, you can just get this one. I'll have a link down below uh, to the dealership. He's got the black one for sale now, and it's a deep matte black, and then he's got this one, and I'm sure he sell this, if he sells this one, he'll buy another one. Maybe we'll wrap it some other wild color or something like that. Maybe he'll give me a commission. I'm not sure. <laughs> but this is wiped down, and now we have to trim out the panel. Because the panel is a little different. I cut this as a rectangle. Again, let me know if you like these videos, if I'm uh, like me talking during the videos and explaining things, or if you just want to see time-lapse of me wrapping. But here's the rectangle. And like before, like I said, we can use magnets, which is really good. These magnets have felt on one side, so they don't damage anything, but they do stick. So this is a good spot here. And of course, then we have enough length. But I kind of want to bring this up and back. We've got enough material. That way we can shift everything. All right, that's good. So we're going to take this, this cutter. And there's so much material here. See, it's bunching up right here. And we don't need all this. So I'm going to take this and cut where the wheel is, or was. And we're gonna use this for mirrors or whatever. Always save scraps. So what I like to do, I like to start on this side and pull the material that way. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit, pull the backing just as, mu just as much as I can and stick it up there, replace the magnet, come down and pull the vinyl off the back and stick it down here so it stays. Now I can remove that magnet, lift the vinyl up, and pull the rest of it off. And since this is a huge compound curve, you kind of have to pull. All right. 
I don't pull all the way because I'm going to slice this and then pull the rest of the way and pull the rest of the way down. But now, again, this fender can be tricky. I mean, the whole car can be tricky. I just like getting out as many wrinkles as possible before I lay a squeegee on this thing. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's, uh, So we're just glassing out everything. Setting things where they go. So I'm gonna take my knife, lift this up. I see where the tape is, so I can just trim here. And now I've got two pieces and I'm gonna adjust those. I'm gonna bring my Bring my cart over so I can use my gun here. Now I don't want to use a whole lot of heat here, but I'm really going to focus it here because that's where it's going to stretch from, right over top of the light. Cool it off a little bit, grab from underneath, and barely pulling. Making the lines go this way, that way I can lift up here and pull the extra up onto the hood and onto the light. That looks really good. This has got too much material. And what I want to do here is fender's right there, it stops right there, but there's a bunch here. So I kind of want to shimmy and shake that and bring that down. But then I kind of want to stretch for this point. So the point is actually right here. I'm gonna give it just a kiss of heat, grab both sides, pull it sideways. So I'm stretching the material ever so slightly to this point, so when I trim it out and heat it, it'll wrap right around there and it'll look amazing, as always. And then I'm gonna take my finger, run up where the light is. So that's defined. And this is, this is great. This is so easy, I'm surprised no, not so many people do this. I'm just kidding, it's actually pretty difficult. Takes some practice, takes some time, uh, takes learning the material and spending the money to really learn the material. And uh, really, it, it also helps understanding the cars. I know Tesla's quite a bit. I've taken mine apart way too many times, probably more than I should have. Uh, so I know Tesla's how to, how to work around them and all their quirks and everything. But now it's time for the squeegee, a uh, glove and squeegee. So we always start with a body line. So I'm gonna start with this body line, work my way down to where the camera is, get this going underneath the camera, and then we're gonna focus on all of this. As I kinda re readjust that, I didn't like that section there. So we're gonna start at the body line, push down, and again, we're just squeegeeing the air out. Let me get on this side so I can knife it over. And you can really play with, as you see how the air, air pockets are gathering, how you manipulate your squeegee to force the air in different areas. So yeah, this does take practice. It's not just a matter of slapping this down. You want to, uh, It's 
It's not just a matter of slapping this thing down like, uh, like a paintbrush. All right, so now we are on every body line. This body line to this body line. Now we're gonna work on this, which I'm gonna put a little bit of heat to it. Yeah, actually, we're going to try to get this little piece of dust out. Happens. Instead of forcing this all the way down and noticing it later, I want to get to this big piece of dust before it gets really bad. All right. That piece of dust sucked, but Sometimes it happens. You get a piece of dust in there and you, you kind of have to stop what you're doing because if you get the big piece of dust in there and you're all finished, sometimes the only way to fix it is to replace the whole panel. So I'll pull that up and I'm going to apply some heat to get rid of any wrinkles. The heat, when you have, when you put heat to the vinyl, that you haven't forced anywhere, uh, it triggers the flat uh, memory of the, of the vinyl. So it goes back to being flat instead of in a curve, as long as it's not stuck to anything. So now we're back to the way it was, which is great. And I'm gonna lock in the light in the front and now we're gonna, now, <laughs> that was kind of a long period, so I'll put a little bit more heat to this. And then I'm going to do a palm technique from here all the way up, going to the bottom. The bottom, lowest portion and we're just forcing air out it's kind of scary at first because you can really if you're not focused you can really get a wrinkle in it and uh, you do get some more air bubbles but those can be worked out pretty easily just with your thumb and forcing them out but it really helps with adhesive lines as you're trying to uh, force the material down big air pocket. Same thing here. And here we can actually, geez, here we can actually use the squeegee. You get a lot more pressure and get all the air out. Okay. So now we've worked from this body line to this body line. Got all the air out. Now it's just a matter of working this body line to the hood. Pulling towards the hood to get all the, the wrinkles out or the move the tension over this way. And then running my finger down the, between the hood, the gap between the hood and the fender. So now we move on to the camera area and I'm just gonna heat that heat this up just to soften it just a little bit and I always start at this point and then work my finger to the flat area come down and out and then through the top area forcing the air out and then all the way up that way you get less adhesive lines and then I like to take the heat Kiss the heat on that, jam my finger in the middle, and then pull it back out. You see how that was able to come back out and everything. It really didn't affect the vinyl, but really forced it in there and forced the tension. And now we're doing the flat section of the fender. Now I'm sticking my fingers behind, popping this so I can get the air out. 
because after that, it's going to be tucked in and that plastic molding comes to here. Again, knowing the car really helps. And pulling back from the corner to get the air out from the corner. And I did see a pocket down here. So I'm going to lift this up. And tuck it. Use the squeegee to tuck it nice and tight. Some heat down here. And then tuck it again. We want to tuck in about a half an inch. So I want to soften this. And I like to start in the middle or wherever there's the most tension and work my way down. Just just, uh, I like to work it all the way to the corner where you see it flatten back out. And then heat it. Then it becomes very similar to like before where we just trim everything out. Up here is a little trick here. Uh, and then of course you want a little bit extra here so you can fold that over But I just trim up along the hood when it's the same color I trim along the hood and just drop it right down there trim everything out and this looks really good Now that was 20 minutes so far But I had that piece of dust that I got out and talking and going over a few things with you. So this is turning out really good This is definitely turning out really good and I'll show you a closer view of what this looks like. So I'm gonna need to push on here. When I trim this, it's going to be rounded over here and wanna shrink that back into place. This is gonna be cut up at an angle here. So, so this will flap down because there's a piece over here that you wanna cover. You trim along the hood, just tuck it in. Well, let me just show you on this side. So that corner is really nice. It's tucked in here. Of course there, this is just wrapped underneath. Once you heat it, you can wrap this underneath and all the way down the fender. And you see right here, it's just down that half inch. Again, just scoring the material. You're not cutting the fender. You cut this out and then you wrap everything around all the way down over to here. Again, well, this side still needs to be post heated all the way. And I do have the fender loose. Let me show you. If you're interested, that bolt right there, this bolt right here loosens the fender up. Oh, I like that angle because now I see I got to trim that a little bit more. But this uh, loosens this fender up so you can really tuck into there really well. And then all you do is push on this back and then tighten it back up and you're, you're good. And you can actually make it better than what Tesla makes it. So this side is going to look like this side really soon. The next step will be to show you what it looks like outside in the sun because this looks so cool in the sun with the satin finish. It's just like PPF. And if you are interested in this, check them out. There's a link down below and you can buy this one if you want to, or you can send me your car. You know, I, I just did the one in Dallas. I got another one from uh, Philadelphia coming here. A guy from Louisville, Kentucky hit me up and he wants to have me wrap his car. And there's a guy in Florida. So you can either drive the car here, go on vacation, like the car out in the driveway, actually. <laughs> He's still on vacation. You can drop it off that way or you can ship it to me. Either way, my prices are awesome. So even with the shipping costs, I'm probably cheaper than what most other shops are because I'm not really a shop. I just do this for fun and the YouTube videos. And again, if you, if you buy this, tell them to give me some commission. So what do you guys think about this color? Let me know down below because if you like this color, he's going to be driving this for a while. But then again, this is for sale and for the right price, anything is available. But if you're looking for a Model Y performance and maybe Tesla pushed you guys out, pushed you farther out where you're into next year when you need a car, but you also want to wrap something cool, something different. You know, this is already done. He's got tons of accessories all from Tesla that he hasn't put on this thing yet. He's got the mud flaps, he's got the roof rails, a um, bunch of stuff inside the car. Uh, hit him up. There'll be a link down below. Also the matte black version I did of this he has for sale on his lot. Like I said, he saw the dealer plate. He owns a couple dealerships here in Charlotte area. So he also has some allocations available. Um, 
but this is not the last car I'm gonna be doing for him. So if you wanna buy this or contact him and say, hey, I'll buy the car from you, get it wrapped, have Brian wrap it this color and I'll buy it from you, whatever you wanna do. But anyway, this thing's awesome.